Right, the series of questions from the Pulp and Paper Times in India. And I will try my best to go through each one of them and answer as best I can. Please describe in brief about WPO's area of work and its objective. And for the purpose of this uh, answering these questions, I will use the acronym WPO each case when I'm referring to the World Packaging Organization. And our focus is education. So we go out there and we educate across the world. We have programs running as we talk uh, across um, 10 countries right now where we will have educational teams going in there and teaching them about technology of packaging, as well as the science and as well as the engineering. Every country is different. So our level of education is different. So we adapt our training programs to the country concerned. So if we're in a developing country, that's very different to being in a developed country when it comes to education. The other aspect to bear in mind is that we align ourselves with numerous other global organizations across the world. One of them being the United Nations, or more specifically, UNIDO, United Nations Industrial Development Organization. And there, we align ourselves with them for the sheer reason because they have access into countries and we have people on the ground in every country simply because we have packaging in every country and so um, we have programs that are run in in oman in pakistan in mongolia uh, we're looking at uh, tanzania now so there are numerous unito projects running and as I mentioned previously, number of educational um, uh, focusing on um, developed countries. And then we look at uh, countries like China, like um, Indonesia, and like the Philippines, across Africa, and like Kenya, Tanzania, as I've just mentioned, uh, Ghana, um, and Nairobi, uh, just to name a few. And we will continue to broaden that as we broaden our educational base. WPO's one of the main vision is about food wastage that can be reduced by better packaging. Food grade packaging is more dependent on barrier resistance and biodegradable coating. What is the size of food grade packaging globally and what are the WPO's initiative to promote the food packaging in order to minimize the food wastage? So I can't answer what is the size of the food brand packaging globally. I don't think anyone knows the answer to that. So let's just put that question aside. What I can tell you is the fact that um, if one looks across the developed world and more so coming in from the developing world, more and more packaging is food grade. Uh, and why is this? Simply because that if it's made food grade, then it can be used in food grade, but also in all the other areas. Whereas though, if it's only for the other areas, it cannot be used for food grade. Slightly different to pharmaceutical um, packaging, 
but that's not what the question relates to. So we are finding across the globe, more and more packaging is being geared for high level barrier resistance. Why? It's because, and this is important, it is because of the 35%, and that's a UN figure, 35% of global food is wasted, bearing in mind that that 35% is made up of developed countries, in other words, from the farm to the processing, and then in developed countries from processing to the plate, in other words, in the home environments. And those are two different percentages. Together, makes up 35%. And that, and that number is not a finite number either, because it could be more. In fact, some have said as high as 50% um, and as low as around about 30%. So for the purpose of this discussion, we use the figure of 35% given to us by the UN. So what we do know is that packaging is part of the solution and not the problem. That is key, fundamental. And also that about of that 35%, a quarter of that, 25%, can be solved by the right packaging, by better packaging, by more suitable packaging, more food grade packaging. And this is the message that we push across the world in our training programs and educational opportunities and when we are with the people face to face, right there in their home countries. And that is what we are good at, going into those countries and teaching. We have tried it and are doing it online as well during COVID, but it has limitations. It's far better being there physically. And we have commenced that physical presence in 2022 again, kicking off the first one right now 26th of march in a few days time in nigeria so all credit to the training uh, portfolio of the wpa what does one understand about environmental social and government's esg in the packaging why it is becoming more depending nowadays what is the status of esg in developing countries a lot of questions all lumped together in that one question. I'll try and break it apart as best I can. So we focus on sustainability. We have a portfolio in the WPO that is all about sustainable packaging. And wherever we have the opportunity, we push that aspect of that sustainability scenario and how important it is in the packaging world. So yes, because of we pushing and everyone else pushing that uh, uh, produce packaging in the large extent of pushing sustainability as well, it's becoming more of the buzzword. And with that goes more demand for it. And it makes sense because if we don't, if we don't do something about sustainable packaging, because right now, the amount of, of natural resources that we are using across the world equates to the use of around about or requiring the use of about uh, nearly two planet Earths. And by 2050, if we continue on that same trajectory, we will require nearly three planet Earths. Now we all know there are no more than one planet Earth, so we've got to do something about it. Now the good thing is that if we do something about it, then we will bring it back in line with requiring one planet Earth by 2050 if we implement these sustainability procedures and um, ensuring that we recycle as much, as much, as much as possible. That is fundamental to the sustainability um, aspect. And I'm going to come back to this because it relates to a few questions uh, later on in this uh, discussion as well when they sort of overlap. And so, yes, we are finding that there are more countries getting involved in this ESG, environmental, social and governance. There is no doubt about it. And as we go out there in our various training programs, 
we push it as well. So it's a double whammy, so to say, because they're getting it from all sides. This is the way to go, folk. We've got to do something about it. We have a responsibility to leave the planet in a better place, in a better way than we found it. We have the means, we have the knowledge, we have the expertise to do something. So let's stand together and do something about it. Any product's impact comes not just from the product itself, but also how it is packed and delivered to the customer. At WPO, how do you evaluate the perception of new age consumers about the compostable and sustainable packaging? Does the packaging keep an age on the products? So, really through that question, there's a lot that uh, is covered all in the one in question number four in terms of sustainability because we have to, as I've just mentioned a moment ago, drive sustainability because along with that goes for possibility, along with that goes for cyclability. But if we want to uh, ensure that we don't touch on the natural resources, it's got to be uh, recyclable. More so recyclable than compostable. Compostable is good if we don't want to um, uh, litter the countryside or our waterways and our seas and oceans and so on, sure. But if we want to maintain uh, sustainability in relation to not affecting our natural resources, then it's all about recyclability. Now, you have to look at it not in isolation. You've got to look at the total picture in terms of answering this question. The reason for that is, if I take a bag, a bag, let's just take a, a plastic bag, an A4 size plastic bag, and an A4 size paper bag, brown paper bag. Now, which one's better for the environment? The immediate answer you would think is that the brown paper bag is better for the environment. Well, the answer is no, not if we look at LCA, life cycle analysis looking at the total picture, all the energy and whatever else is used in chopping down those trees, putting it through the, 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 the Ford Drinia machine and, and making a pulp and creating a bag, as opposed to taking the oil, refining it, etc., etc., and by uh, uh, chemically creating a polymer and a bag. Roughly, roughly, not specific because each one's different. But in that scenario, I've just painted that picture, then it is about seven times less impact if we go for the plastic bag. And even more so if we recycle that plastic. It's actually less impact in terms of life cycle analysis. Looking at all the aspects right through the whole process, even the, the, the ships and the trucks and the, and, the, and the trains that transport the product across the world, uh, taking all that energy consumption into account, then the plastic bag is better for the environment. So you have to see it in the total picture. And this is the this is the crux of packaging because when packaging is not just a simple a simple aspect, it's just a pack, it's a bottle or a, or a box. No, no, no. There's a lot of science and technology that goes behind the creation of that particular packaging component. And you have to understand all the aspects of that packaging component to come up with a scientific verification of which one is actually better for the environment. Sustainability. There have been more stories about the greenwashing, especially for paper bottles and fruit packaging. What is the truth behind this misconception? Don't you think that the greenwashing in developing country is deceiving to the consumers? Unfortunately, because you know money is the uh, um, is the source of all evil, as they say, and yeah, is is a classic example of that. Because greenwashing is misleading. It's not telling the truth, or it's not telling the whole truth. And so the majority of consumers don't understand all the science and the technology in packaging. And so they are led by these people that are greenwashing. 
And so, and there are lots of greenwashing terminologies. And that's why I, earlier on in one of the questions, I kept it to recycling and compostability. It was that clear. But, and any, well, even so, it was compostability, is that in an industrial compostable um, apparatus or is that in your garden compost? One has to um, verify that aspect as well. And, and then recycling, obviously, is recycling in the true sense of the word. Now, all the other words could be misleading. So, yes, um, it, it, it certainly is. And, and it's not only in paper, it's also in plastic. Um, so it is, it is a, a misconception, it is a misunderstanding. I, I would say it's more of a misunderstanding than a misconception. But I think in, in most cases we are deceiving the consumer. The United Nations have approved a landmark agreement to create the world's first global plastic pollution treaty. Most of the nations are in the race to curb the single-use plastic. Does WPO think that the alternative packaging, paper and molded fibers will work equally or better than the plastic version? Again, you can't take it in isolation because certain products will not be able to be packed in paper and board and they will need to be in one of the polymers. And this leads me to what I said earlier on, for those of you who didn't quite catch. I was talking about uh, making sure that the, the user understands that packaging is part of the solution and not the problem. The problem is you and I. What are we doing with the packaging once we remove the contents from it? That is fundamental and that is probably the most important part of probably any of these questions. We have to get our own backyard corrected and right and make sure that all packaging, once we remove the contents, goes in the correct recycling receptacle so that it can be recycled and therefore it will not impact our environment and that we will not use more natural resources but to recycle. That is key. Irrespective of the product, because the product requires different packaging. Some products require metal. Some re require an inert material like glass or aluminium. So we can't, we, we, this, this question is, is not clear in what is being asked because it depends on the product. Now you can take paper or board and line it with a polymer coating or some sort of lacquer uh, that's impermeable but is recyclable. Those are alternatives that can be used but it's more what type of product it is than what type of material it is because the product determine, determines the material. So long as the, the person doing the designing understands material science that is key and i'm um, in there are there are cases when those who are designing are not fully familiar from a scientific perspective from a science perspective the various materials and what they are capable of doing the retail ready packaging industry is expected to grow fast in coming years a large number of Retailers has turned to measures that cut down on labor. How does WPO assess the future growth of retail-ready packaging and its disadvantages, if any? Okay. Um, Retail-ready packaging has its place in retail. Uh, it's not suited for all types of retail. Uh, and if one looks across the world, there's a lot of um, retailing being done that is not formalized or formal type retail as maybe uh, many of the developed countries understand. And I've been privy to and seen for myself certain Central African and West African countries where a large part of their products are sold on the open market. 
And what do I mean by the open market? For some of those developed countries, you might call it farmer's market. So with that in mind, we it's not about re, um, retail ready packaging. It's about where is it and where will it be sold? So if I now break this question up and say, right, if I'm only looking at retail ready packaging and informalized sector, then there is certainly a place for retail ready packaging. And it, it works exceptionally well. And yes, it cuts down on the time in putting the product onto the shelves. The impact that it does on the labor force, uh, yeah, that is a spin-off of it. Negatively or positively, depends on how you, one looks at it. But this is all in the process of engineering development over many, many years. And sure, I think there's a lot of future growth potential in, in, in retail ready type packaging. And yes, there are certain disadvantages. But one must see it in the context of where it is used. And is that the majority across the world or only in the selected type formalized um, retail shopping type centers? You want to clarify the difference. I think my, in my travels across many, many, many countries over the last four and a half years, or actually more, then it is clear to me that th this question gener is generated more looking at it from a developed country's perspective than a developing country. And I think there's a lot of developing countries around the world and they don't need retail ready packaging. They're not geared for retail ready packaging. So I don't think it's going to affect them. And in the, in the, in the formal sector of um, developed countries, there's certainly a need for such packaging. And who knows what the next uh, development will be. It's quite possible that something new will come up regarding that that favors more the developing world than the developed world. But this is all part of evolution and development. COVID pandemic has surged the price of paper packaging multifolds. The reason behind is costly raw material and spikes in the shipping freights. The finished paper price has been almost doubled. Uh, doesn't WPO think that extra burden of price may derail the drive of sustainable and compostable packaging among the various industry? I think to a certain extent, the answer is yes. It, it could well um, be an extra price burden. However, however, and this is what is important, is to see it in the, in the total context. All of us that are in packaging, as I said earlier on, we have an obligation to the generations that follow us. We have a responsibility to leave the planet in a better place than what we found it. I want to stress that before I answer this question, because in giving you that statement I've just told you, that in itself means that we need to do something that doesn't use up more natural resources than we should. And certainly not more than what we are using at the moment, because already we're using too many, because we're not recycling. Okay, so, yes, uh, this drive, uh, and certainly the pandemic has been an influencing factor, uh, but in the big scheme of things, in the big scheme of things, if one takes the Spanish flu, that lasted three years, from 1918 to 1920, uh, the predictions are that this virus on the COVID-19 will be around about five years, according to to um, those in the in the in, in the knowledge of of, uh, of epidemiology. If that is the case, five years in the lifespan is a very small amount. So, in the big scheme, this is only a small part that uh, COVID is making the impact. But Yes, 
if we continue what we're doing, we, 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 we're going to use, we're going to require more than one planet Earth. And there aren't more than one planet Earth. Then therefore we're going to use up all our natural resources. So we don't have any alternative. Well, we don't know of any alternative now other than to reduce the amount of burden we're placing on our planet in terms of natural resources. So the price to pay is to ensure sustainability, to ensure recyclability. There is no getting around that. I think in time, my gut feel, based on what I'm seeing around the world, what I'm hearing, that sustainability aspect will become the norm in 10, 15 years, like absolute norm. And that will drive the price down again, unit price. And we've seen that with many other commodities over the over time. Let's just make the electronic world. When calculators first came out, there were an exorbitant amount back in the early 80s. Now you buy them for a few dollars, the same the one that does the same function. So I, I, I'm, I'm convinced that over time, prediction, 10, 15 years, the price will come down. But we have to do it. That's the key the key uh, message. Being a prominent packaging organization, what are the major researches being carried out on the paper-based packaging in the world? Any breakthrough? Well, you know, we hear of a lot of breakthroughs all the time. New technologies in the paper, term, in, in, especially in, in, in strength and in thickness. And, uh, and I think that in itself is an enormous plus for the paper and board industry. And that they're not sitting on their laurels. There's a lot of work being done. And I've seen, I've seen that prior to COVID when I was doing a lot of traveling. Um, there's a lot of research-based organizations doing fun, uh, real fundamental work in terms of fibers in, 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 uh, in, in paper and board. And there's no doubt in my mind that this continual research that is being done delivers better outcomes over time. In the past 10, 15 years, we've seen a surge in the polymer sector. Sure. And that's left the paper, the paper and board guys maybe a little bit behind. But I see that changing. Simply because paper and board has always had a place in packaging. And probably will always into the future. And at this moment, at this current period we're going through, when I say period, let's look a generation, 20 years, 25 years. The majority of people in packaging and lay people, in other words, the rest of the population, have this perception that paper and board is better than plastic. And in some cases it is, sure, but bearing in mind what I told you a few questions back. With that in mind, there will always be a demand by the consumers for paper and board over plastic. No doubt about it. But and, and when there's a choice to be made, they'll probably go more down the paper route, even though the LCA is not as good. But if we can continue to recycle, that is important. So if we can make products out of paper and board that lend themselves to better recycling, lend themselves that they can be recycled more than the the figure of seven times that is sort of being pushed around at the moment. And but I've heard, recently there was a study in Austria that actually made that much longer. So, and I know the, the fibers get shorter and shorter as it's recycled. I do think with this ongoing research, that aspect is going to be increased. I have no doubt in my mind about that, that we will see more recycling happening in paper and board into the future. WPO's mission of better quality of life through better packaging for more people. How does packaging change our life? Well, we cannot do without packaging. Absolutely not. We can't buy sugar, we can't buy flour, 
we can't buy milk, we can't buy meat, especially if it has to be stored without packaging. And we as people, we as a population, have put the pressure on the system, on the industry, to create more packaging for all these products. We have placed so much pressure on them that we've extended shelf life for fresh food from about five days to around 70 to 90 days. That is phenomenal. How and why? Well, how is through packaging. Why? Because our lifestyles are such that if, uh, if we're from a Southern Hemisphere country and we're traveling into Europe in Northern Hemisphere in winter, we still want to eat bananas. How do we do that? Packaging allows us to have bananas out of season in another region. And so we are to blame in terms of um, how does it change our life. We can't go back to the lifestyle that our great grandparents had, where the, the packaging was much less or limited. We've moved on and it will take I don't know what to move us back to a hundred years ago or 150 years ago. I, I cannot I cannot see that happening. And therefore we need to now make decisions around what where we are in our in, in, in the lifespan of this whole packaging development. Amid the COVID pandemic, studies indicate that the virus may stay on the surface from 3 to 9 days. This is where packaging and material technology come into the play. The pandemic proof packaging of the future will remain in wider demand across the world or it is just a temporary bubble. Well, there are two ways of looking at this question. My 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 thinking more is that it's a temporary bubble but it's not a short-term temporary bubble remember a few questions ago i mentioned that the pandemic is estimated to be around with us for five years that's how long the temporary bubble will last i think in 10 years hence this will not be a factor in other words in in 2032 Remember what I've said now and see if I'm right or wrong. Uh, I don't believe that we will be um, con, uh, con, too concerned about pandemic-proof packaging. There may well be far more important aspects to be dealing with than pandemic-proof packaging in 2032. Uh, at the moment, yes, the demand is there because our whole focus for the last two and some years has been COVID-19. Each and every one of us have lived with it every single day for the last 700 and something days. So yes, our mindset is of such that we need pandemic proof packaging for now. But I don't believe in five, 10 years from now, no. According to a general, in circular economy infrastructure, we need to track and trace for the reusable packaging. Digital passports and mandatory reporting could provide a way to audit and incentivize the reuse of packaging, allowing government to focus on prevention and to frame packaging as an asset. What does WPO stand on this? Now this question all revolves around extended producer responsibility and the WPO 100% supports EPR extended producer responsibility no doubt that that can and should and will play a significant part into the future the more responsibility that producers of packaging take on the better the outcomes of recycling and that answers that question 100 in my mind we have to take ownership if we're producing packaging we've got to own that packaging and get it back and recycle it 
Now, this is working well in, 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 in countries uh, in Europe, in particular uh, 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 Austria, to Germany, to the Netherlands. But we need to move that across into more countries around the world. Recently, the WP undertook a project with Indonesians. And amongst other things, this was one of the fundamental aspects that had to be put in place in Indonesia, which is the fourth largest country by population, to make uh, a more recite, a more sustainable packaging world for that country. And they saw it as being the, the answer to the current issue. And the current issue in many, many other countries. So I urge all those that are involved in packaging that this is the way that we should be steering it towards an EPR system. And the WPO, um, if you go onto our website, you will see there that we have a book uh, that, got, and that, and that gives guidelines to exactly this aspect of recycling. recycling. I urge you to refer to our website on that. The plastic industry has been striving to save its existence and as a result many kind of research have been conducted to make minimum use of plastic in food packaging. In one research in which three layers of recycled plastic are blown up with one layer of virgin grade plastic where the virgin layer is placed towards the food contact site. Is it a successful research? If this research is successful, then 100% paper-based packaging with biodegradable coating has to wait a long time to get the plastic packaging replaced. As primary packaging for food products, how does WPO assess this research and its outcomes? Stand. So the answer to the first part, yes, that is correct. Um, Multi-layered uh, recycled material with a virgin layer on the inside has overcome a number of issues, especially in the food packaging, uh, to ensure that uh, that which comes into contact with the food, the packaging coming into contact with the food, um, is of the correct uh, grade. So the answer is yes. And has it been successful? Yes, it's been very successful, and it's been um, it's been extended to beyond uh, food into beverages. Uh, they're looking at it into pharmaceutical uh, as well now. Um, so yes, it is there. It, it is a solution. Now, how does this impact the paper side of things? I don't think that the paper guys uh, across the world should see it as a 100% negative on their uh, on their space. I think that uh, there's a place for paper and board. So all that the paper and board guys need to do is similarly, and therefore put a layer on the inside of theirs, be that a lacquer, recyclable, uh, sustainable product, um, or polymer-based material that's, uh, um, that can be recycled or removed to be able to be recycled. Um, and probably based on what I've seen, it's, it, it would appear to me that the, the internal lacquers that are, um, that can be recycled would be the option to go. Uh, and I've seen this in a couple of countries already uh, and, and working exceptionally well. I think more research needs to be done in terms of barrier for that, barrier in relation to uh, gases. Uh, it's certainly impermeable to water-based products, uh, very successful. I'm referring to the, the inner coating of paperboard. Uh, but I think in terms of gases, there's more research and work to be done. I have no doubt in my mind, we've got some clever guys in, in that industry, in paper and board, and I'm sure that they will come up with the answer. Uh, and that, that competes in that same space with the plastic guys. Um, and, and, and WPO would support both research outcomes. You know, we don't, we don't favor one against the other at all, and including metals and glass. They're all equally important to us because they all form part of the, the mainstream materials, being plastic, glass, paperboard, and metal. And on that note, I'll let you farewell. 
and wishing you all the very best. Thank you.